Okay. Do it like that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'll start with the questions. As soon as you can see that there is a need um, uh, to show any slide or video or any anything you tell me, okay? Okay. So let's start with the kids. There are rumors that uh, FDA approved uh, the vaccine uh, for 12 years old and uh, older children, and that uh, Israel is going to start vaccinating children. Is that true or not? And is it difficult or not? And how will it impact the whole vaccination? Well, the FDA did approve the 12 to 15 vaccination, and it's a great um, news. Now the Ministry of Health here is uh, arguing whether it's, cor whether it's needed to vaccinate these kids or not, since the level of the epidemic here in Israel is uh, very low now. Um, so there are many senior doctors that are saying that it's very uh, urgent to vaccinate the kids, and some senior doctors are saying that it's not urgent, and only if we will see um, again, a rise of the epidemic, we will need to reconsider it. But I think that we will start vaccinating kids very soon. And the way that it's going to be done, if it's, if it's still while the schools are open until the 20th of uh, June, then the vaccination will be given at school, like routine vaccination. But every parent will have the option to bring the kid also to one of the uh, clinics, the community clinics, and get vaccinated there. It should be coordinated. The data that someone got vaccinated in school will be coordinated with the data of the um, caregivers or the health providers in Israel. Here I have a couple of questions. Uh, has vaccination against any disease been done in the school in Israel? And if yes, then when did it happen the last time? Well, until the age of five, all the vaccinations are given in uh, maternity centers, in, in the uh, clinics, in the normal clinics. From the first grade, the age of six, vaccinations are normally given in school. Parents are getting uh, some kind of a note. The kid brings the notes from the teacher, and we need to sign if we approve uh, that uh, the nurse in the school will uh, vaccinate the kid. And then a few days later, the kid is vaccinated with all the routine vaccinations. Um, in the school, do you perceive that it will be complicated due to the uh, temperature regimes of Pfizer or due to the fact that you don't want to lose the doses? How this logistics will be organized? First of all, the total number of eligible kids is about one million. Um, it's something that can be done in about two weeks, even less, uh, depending on, on the ratio of each uh, school. Probably it will be done by paramedics of our ambulance services. They will come and establish like a nurse station in each school and for two days we'll vaccinate all the kids there. Take into consideration that in let's say six hours of school we can vaccinate in one station about 50 kids. So if the school has about um, 500 kids, we need 10, 10 paramedics or 10 nurses, and we can do it in one day, each school. And so even if we have enough doses now in Israel, so even if from each bottle we take five doses and not six, it's, it's a pity, but it's not uh, that much of a damage. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, what is the difference between the approach at school and out of school. Will, for example, bringing kids to the um, health clinic push the parents themselves or, or not? I think that um, if talking about the convenience of the parents and the kids, it's much easier to vaccinate them at school. Otherwise, the parent needs to take the kid in the afternoon and Maybe the kid has some uh, sports to do or things that he does with his friends. 
Um, so it's much easier to do it with the, in the schools. It will no doubt raise the acceptance of the vaccination. And the fact that you have two options as a parent and as a teenage, either at school or at our clinics, it, um, it, it, I hope it will bring a very high percentage of acceptance. Um, speaking about acceptance and about this intervention from the communication point of view, mm -hmm. uh, kids of 12 and f uh, from 12 to 15, and you said it's 1 million of kids, those are usually kids who speak several languages, at least in Israel they would be speaking Hebrew, English, uh, probably French and uh, Russian, I guess, and probably some other languages. Uh, they are internet kids, they have Instagram, TikTok, uh, they have their own TV shows, series and stuff like that. Uh, what do you know about them? Do they want to get vaccinated against COVID? They are indifferent to it, they are um, in need to get vaccinated. What are their moods and are you planning to talk to them or it will be in a more way like this is the, your school, this is vaccination, go, 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 e basta. Is there a need to talk to them at all? I don't know of any teenager in the age of 12 to 15 that you tell him you need to go and he goes. Usually, you have to um, give him very good arguments why he should do something. And the best argument here is that these kids are very much, they are highly smart, and they know that there are many things that they cannot do if they will not get vaccinated. They will not be able to go to concerts, cinema, uh, part of the restaurant, uh, football matches, etc. So, and they will not be able to travel abroad. So, I think that with uh, medium to high economical status kids, we will see very high uh, acceptance of the vaccination. With the low income groups, we will see a bit lower of uh, acceptance, but this is the same with, uh, with uh, the adults. So what I think is that we need to touch the kids, we need to uh, meet them, as you said, in TikTok, in Instagram, we need to meet them in every platform that they are using. Whenever you want to say something to someone, you need to first understand which platform this someone is using. So my kid, I have a daughter at the age of 14, and she wants to get vaccinated because she wants to get into the cinema. And she, like, my work, I bring my work at home every day and, and speak with the Zoom or with the telephone all day long. But the first time that she came to talk to me seriously about the COVID vaccination was when she met a TikTok campaign that we did. Um, and she didn't even understand that it was Maccabi behind it. She just saw a celeb in the TikTok, someone that she knows, and it opened the discussion. That's Do the you way. have this TikTok to show now? Is it difficult to find um, on the screen? I'll ask it. I'll ask someone to send it to me and maybe we'll have it until the end of the talk. Okay. Uh, before you continue, just a couple of uh, clarification questions because some people who are watching us now watched our previous uh, series of this interview and some people didn't. Uh, so you said the cinema, uh, parts of the restaurants, um, could you explain a bit more who is allowed to go to cinema, football, yeah. and um, and how in Israel for the moment? Just a second. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking if we have something in Russian with the TikTok, but I must say that the young kids, if they speak Russian, they mainly speak Hebrew, and then they speak Russian with their grandmothers and grandfathers, but uh, probably we... We have it for sure in Hebrew. I don't think that we have it in Russian, but someone will send it to me soon and I will show it. Um, mm -hmm. So in Israel, we call it uh, like the, um, the purple certificate. The purple certificate is for 
businesses and cinemas and uh, public pools. So you have a certain number of people that you can enter inside, you can bring inside, and you may have some restrictions about um, bringing inside only vaccinated people. In closed places like cinemas, I think that it's still only vaccinated people. And when you say vaccinated, you mean two doses? Two doses and two weeks after the second dose. Two weeks after the second dose. Yeah. And the person has more freedom to enter cinema or football match or something like that. Yes. Then you said the word travel. You said they want to travel. Is it because you expect other countries to demand the information on vaccination or because you do not let the citizens of Israel out until they are vaccinated? Um, I think that they will, I, I don't really remember the whole uh, details, but uh, first of all, Israel is trying to uh, sign with other countries that we will have a bilateral uh, traveling. And for now, it's only for vaccinated people. Again, two weeks after the second dose. So it's, it's kind of a demand. If you want to travel abroad, you have to have two weeks after the, the vaccination. And uh, I the, got, the same, uh, the, what did you say? I got it. I just want to send it to myself mm -hmm. and then uh, just a second. Okay. Okay, soon it will arrive and I will share my screen. While you are looking for it, um, the question with regard to low income and um, high income mm -hmm. uh, or middle income, when you were mentioning, you said the same as with adults. Did you see any correlation during the campaign among adults between their attitude to vaccination depending on their economic status? Yes, we did. Um, now the acceptance in all the population is very high. It's nearly 90%. But what we did see is where the higher income uh, um, populations or groups, they were much faster getting the vaccination. So with the lower income, it took a bit longer to get them vaccinated. And it's, it's not just the low income. It's like in Israel, there is some kind of correlation between low income and ultra-Orthodox uh, population and Arab population. It's not 100% correlation, but um, it's, it's nearly, it's ve with very high uh, uh, percentage of correlation. You mentioned several times uh, acceptance rate, and you even said the percentage of acceptance rate. Uh, for those who are listening to us, how would you explain how do you measure the acceptance rate at different stages of the campaign? How do you know? So, what we did is we took all the, all the people in Israel above 16 years of age, okay? All the people that are older than 16. Then we took out of them, at the first, only until recently, we took out of them all the people who are positive for COVID. And then we left with the people who need to get vaccinated. So what we have now is about 90% of the population, uh, most, nearly, the, or nearly all of them got two doses of vaccination and a small part of them got uh, sick with corona and then he uh, didn't get vaccinated in the first weeks or months of the vaccination campaign. So the, you are, when you are saying acceptance rate, you mean exactly physical evidence of it as a person who got vaccinated. Yes. But during the campaign, did you measure any attitudes? Did you do any questionnaires or it was not necessary and it was a waste of time and money to ask questions? Well, it's a very good question because if you would ask me, let's say three weeks before starting the campaign, we were sure that the biggest challenge will be to bring people to get vaccinated. We were sure that people will not come. And then uh, in the last few weeks, we understood that something is wrong with our perceptions. 
and people do want to get vaccinated. And once we opened the line, again, we were wrong with anticipating the level of demand and all our telephone systems collapsed. And it took us about 48 hours to, to do many, many digital, digital things to lower the burden on the telephone line. So the level of acceptance, the level of uh, people demanding the vaccination was amazing. And we started only with people that are above 60, 60. And then we were starting to get telephone calls from people who are 59 and 11 months telling us, please, but why not us? And then when we took the bar to, let's say, 55 and more, again, we got calls from 40, uh, from 54 and 11 months asking for the vaccination again, we uh, understood that it's like a gold. It's like money being uh, uh, just uh, thrown away and people are wanting to get this vaccination with very high uh, um, demand. So, so what are the general figures now? Over 5 million people in Israel got two doses which is nearly 90 nearly 90 percent of the relevant population who are those 10 percent now what's your next target well just try to think of something that is not breathing eating sleeping drinking that 90 percent of the population is willing to do so I really don't put any effort on the last 10%. We did a lot of effort with, let's say, the 80 to 90%, because we wanted to reach 90%. And we did a lot of effort with people above the age of 50, because with them, we wanted to reach higher numbers. And we already reached 94 point something percent with the over 50. So, I think that there's no need to invest in the other 10%. It's, it's okay. Uh, did you start vaccinating foreigners who want to get vaccinated for money, let's say? Well, actually, in Israel, there is a way to get vaccinated if you are a foreigner, but it's not what we do. Many people are coming to Israel um, as students, and as diplomats and as foreign reporters. So for many years, it was possible for them to get health insurance and health services from the same organizations that are providing the health care to the people in Israel. They're just buying it in private money and not budgeted by the government. And part of this health insurance plan is getting also vaccination. So it was some kind of, let's say, um, um, an open part of the... We didn't think about corona vaccination, of course, when we made this plan. So um, it was possible for people from abroad to come to Israel to pay a lot of money and get vaccinated. I think that a few hundred did that, not more than that. Before I will go in details asking you how you made the success from 80% to 90 and people with, uh, who are above 50 years old, uh, can you show this TikTok thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's too heavy probably, so I'm waiting it for, to come to my oh, it's Gmail. it's not just yet like, there? No, it's not yet there, but I'll Okay, if it is not yet there, so tell me what did you do to people above 50? Which instruments were used? to attract them, if any, special interest? First of all, we started, we started very well with above 50. Uh, since, again, we started with above 60. So all the people in the nearest group, 55 or 50 and more, felt that it, they, they nearly touched this goal. So they really want it, but they cannot get it. It raised the demand. If you want to raise demand, create shortage. Once you create shortage of something, 
all the people want it. So I don't think that anyone thought about it beforehand, but uh, starting with the 60 and above created a great demand with the 50 and above. So once the lines were open for the 50 and above, the demand was high. But we uh, measured every day. Every day we had like um, a conference call with all the Maccabi management and we had it with few points after the present point. So we really knew how many people got vaccinated in each age group, in each city, and how many still need to get uh, vaccinated. Now, once the demand stopped, we started approaching the people. Oh. We didn't, okay, we didn't wait them to call us. What we did is, first of all, we used a lot of automation. We sent them a text message saying, please come and get vaccinated. Or you have a link here, just open it and schedule an appointment for yourself. Then if he did not, and many did in that way, but if he did not, then immediately or two days later, he got another uh, text message. And two days later, he got a recorded message calling him to get vaccinated. If all that didn't help, we start sending him... Um, let's say a psychological manipulation, but a positive one. We told him, look, we are saving two doses for you. And you already have two appointments, one in two days from now and one in three weeks from now. Please come and get vaccinated. And he touched this, this kind of message, touched a very sensitive nerve you start feeling that you are doing wrong if you are not coming to get vaccinated. You felt uncomfortable because this Maccabi, they are keeping vaccinations for me. It's, it's rude on my side not to come and get them. It helped. Thousands of people came and get vaccinated. But we had another line of um, offense, let's say, because if people did not come, we called them. And if they did not come, their doctor, once they will come to the doctor because I don't know, they have a stomach ache, the doctor will have uh, an alert coming on his computer saying, look, Katya did not get vaccinated. Tell her to come and get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And again, another few thousand came uh, by this way as well. We really hunt people down on the positive way, of course, but we hunt them down. We don't let anyone off the hook. We saw, for example, uh, videos on uh, social networks with the prime minister talking about uh, vaccination and yes. with, I guess, some actors or some other. There was a funny one on uh, Yom Kippur, I think, which was done on, or not, not Yom Kippur. No, it was not on Yom, Yom Kippur. It was on um, some funny holiday because Yom Kippur is not funny per se. Anuka. I, 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 no, it with wasn't. Hanukkah. I forgot. It was with different animals and funny creatures in the, okay. in the whole in the whole thing. Um, so basically, who else was talking to people above fifty? Who are their heroes in uh, Israel? And did you use this approach at all with the, they, uh, they, some they don't really have with the opinion leaders? Well, I don't think that someone above fifty really have. Uh, just a second, I'm trying to send it again. I don't think that people above fifty have heroes. What they do have is this year, with all the lockdowns and everything, made people take a lot of attention on their health. They had more time. Um, and I think that the vaccination, the waiting for the vaccination, really created enough demand, especially when all you hear is that 80% of the patients are above, I don't remember, 70. So when you get above 50, you start to ask yourself, maybe it's much more safe to get the vaccination. I think that they were, um, the decision was made not about TikTok celeb. It was made with real argument saying, it's safer for me to get vaccinated and I want to keep my job. So I'll get vaccinated because unless I'll do that, maybe I will not be able to enter many things. 
So basically, celebs are not so much needed for people above 50 in talking to them. Um, I think so. Just a second. I'm still experiencing some problem with the TikTok, but maybe now it will be better. Okay, just a second. I'll stop it. Just a second. Okay, can I share my screen? Yes, I guess you can. Just a sec, my team will do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. You see here one of the um, uh, very young singers, and you see here. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I'll have to also share sound just a second. Okay, you see here some uh, words in Hebrew. Why should I get vaccinated? So this one is, well, just because I want, I want to get out to parties and for that I need to get vaccinated. Go get vaccinated. That's it. Short, mm -hmm. precise, uh, right to the point, not with too much blah, blah, because teens will not get it with too much blah, blah. Uh, get back on the screen because we yeah. I do not see you anymore. You don't so see. it's a very short TikTok format, which is less than 10 seconds, I think, or something, or 20 Maybe seconds. Maybe 10 right? to 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the important thing which I want to ask you is with regard to uh, the vaccination now. Is it ongoing or is it totally stopped because of the uh, armed conflict? Hmm. It stopped a few weeks ago already because uh, not enough people to continue vaccinating. Um, we have like in, in the highest days, in the first weeks of the vaccination, we had 200 250,000 people per day in Israel totally. Now we have about 5,000 per day. And it's not been because of the conflict. With people, we finished vaccinating nearly everyone. So people really do not come anymore. And we still have, we, we closed the big compounds that we have. Now we don't have a unique compound for the vaccination. People can come to the clinics and get it. And it is possible despite of the conflict for the moment. Yes, probably in the places I, I live. I live in the northern part of Israel, where by now we don't have any missiles here. We have other problems with our neighbors, let's say. Um, but the clinics here are working all the same. Probably in the conflict areas, which is like three hours or two hours out from here, um, not all of the clinics are open and people really will not think about getting vaccinated today. They are running from shelter to shelter with 30 second um, siren. Mm -hmm. So it's not about immunization at all for them no, no, for the moment. No, not now. We are watching, of course, all the videos about the Iron Dome and everything. Yeah. Um, so, uh, asking about the further narrative, you said that still several thousand people, several people can be vaccinated per day from those who are left in this 10%. Uh, is the discussion big with regard to the new Indian strain and whether vaccine is working against it or not? What are people asking and who is talking to them about that? For a few days, the Indian variant was in the headlines, and we were very much afraid that it will not, um, that the vaccination will not protect against it. But once we saw that the level of the epidemic is staying low, we understood that it's not a great threat. And then we had the South African variant, and we just hope that all these variants will be covered by the vaccination. So for now, like yesterday, we had 16 patients, new patients with COVID, one sick. No, you don't mean hospitalized, but just in general infected. In general infected, uh, I think that we have... You mean 16, like one six? One six. <clears throat> new patients, new positive patients, most of them like 
probably just one of them is hospitalized or even less than one of them. We had so during, people are not dying of COVID anymore in Israel. Um, mm, 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 I checked it just before we started talking just a second. I think that we have 64 patients that are considered in a bad situation in hospital. But 64 is a very, very low number that we can really deal with. Just a second, I'm just searching for this uh, data. Yeah. So yesterday we had one new patient who died. Just one died yesterday. And we had two patients that are two new patients that are hospitalized with severe conditions. And total of 64 patients in severe condition in hospital. Mm -hmm. So what is on the discussion next? New, new strains are not a part of the discussion, as far as I understand. Uh, what is on the discussion? How long the immunity will last, whether you need booster doses, or it's not on the discussion? It is, it is. Um, I think that the discussion is now about few things. First of all, the vaccination, how long will it last? How long will it cover the patient? Second is, what should be the policy regarding opening the sky, opening the airport? for incoming tourism? Should we insist only on uh, vaccinated tourists or not? And the third thing is about the economy uh, situation in Israel that we need to reignite uh, all the small businesses and the tourism uh, um, arena as a whole that, that suffered a great of course, a great uh, punch in the belly. And now with, uh, with the security situation that we have in Israel, again, many businesses are suffering a great uh, slowdown, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, if you happen to have among the division of um, vaccinated people, uh, those who had any underlying conditions, do you have these statistics or if you can dig it out? The reason why I'm asking, lots of questions, including some questions uh, under this um, interview, which is related to autoimmune diseases, for example, or people are asking with oncological diseases or with other chronic conditions, but especially a lot of questions are about autoimmune conditions. Um, whether you can or you can't. And of course, there are lots of different opinions and strange sometimes opinions from Ukrainian doctors, the same as uh, with regard to pregnancy. Do you have any qu um, figures which you can show now with regard to Israel and pregnant women getting vaccinated and uh, Israel and people with oncological or other conditions getting vaccinated? So, first of all, with pregnant women, um nearly 80% of the pregnant women in Maccabi got vaccinated. It's a bit lower than the general population, but it's still very high. Um, what, we, what we're trying to recommend is not to get vaccinated in the first trimester, but only after the first trimester. I don't really remember the reason for that. Plus, we... Recomm we highly recommend people with um, oncology conditions to get vaccinated as early as possible. When we started, I said that we started with the 60 and above, but if to be accurate, we started with three main groups, 60 and above, oncology patients, and um, medical staff, medical personnel. These were the three groups. So oncology patients is with the top priority to get vaccinated, of course. And the um, coverage among them is high? Uh, very high. I don't remember. I don't have the data for that, but very high. Um, do you have any data on any auto autoimmune diseases? Does it happen to be an open data? Um, I don't have that. But what I can say is that whenever someone feels that he needs to get consulted with someone, we provide him this consultation. Plus, we have some kind of a committee inside Maccabi, 
and also in the Ministry of Health to decide if someone can or cannot get vaccinated. In some cases, we had people, let's say, 15, one, five years old, teenagers, that we decided to vaccinate, even though they are below the FDA uh, approval, because they suffered from um, other diseases that put them at risk, at higher risk for the COVID. So we decided it will be safer for them to get vaccinated, even though they are younger than 16. Um, so you don't have the next target apart the kids between 12 and 15, correct? This is the next target, uh, and I must say that I assume that if they are, if there are still some parents of this age group that did not get vaccinated yet, maybe vaccinating the teenage, the teenagers will make the parents get vaccinated as well because they will want to set an example because this kid will want his parent to take him abroad. So this parent must be vaccinated as well um, because maybe other groups, not just the parents, might think that vaccinating the kids will finish all the doses that we have in Israel so the fear of missing out will make them run and get vaccinated. But it's only um, an assumption. It's not something that they really investigated. Um, tell me more about the difficult groups. Which difficult targets you had? As far as I understand, one of them were Orthodox people, correct? Yeah. Uh, and who, how, what worked with them, what didn't work with them? And uh, which other groups were complicated? As far as I understand, initially, the group which is listening to Russian TV was complicated as well. So could you tell me a couple of examples of difficult groups and what finally worked for them? We had, talking large groups, not uh, very specific ones, ultra-Orthodox Jews, um, the Muslim Arabs, because we have also Christian Arabs, and very old people that immigrated from uh, former Soviet Union. These were the three focus groups that we put a lot of uh, resources and efforts to get them vaccinated. What we try to do is to find the best platforms or the best ways to reach them and to convince them to get vaccinated. Um, like with the Orthodox, we spoke with the rabbis and we, we, we asked them to issue like a letter signed by them calling all the believers or all the um, groups that uh, follow them, calling them to get vaccinated. So in the first few weeks, they did not come in high numbers. But then when we conquer together with the rabbis, when we conquer this uh, barrier, also, they, they came and get vaccinated in high numbers. The second group was the um, Muslim Arab. And I think that in, in with this population, it was, it was more like um, related to the economical status. Many of them are with middle and low economical status out of many reasons. So they, I think that that was the main reason why they did not come at the same pace that the general population came. But at the end, we reached the same numbers or nearly the same numbers also with this population. The last one was, as I said, the Russian-speaking uh, old population, Russian or Ukrainian. And what we did with them is that we um, took medical staff, our medical staff that speaks Russian, and we started asking them to call all the family and all the friends of their parents and really convince them one by one to get vaccinated. So when it comes not from the institute, but from a person, it reaches higher levels of acceptance. 
higher level of trust, I guess. For yes, higher level of trust. trust. Right. And for those who probably started to watch not from the beginning, can you open the official data and say what is the percentage with two doses and with one dose in overall population? Um, or if you can share the screen, for example. It will be in Hebrew, of course, but... Yeah, but you will see the figures, I guess. Yeah. Just a second, I'll share. Okay, so what you can see here, just a second. What you can see here is the total number. In Israel, we have 10 million people. So you can see that 800, a bit more than 800 got positive for uh, Corona. 13 new patients yesterday. This is the um, number of severe cases now in hospital, 64, with uh, two new patients from yesterday to today. This is the number of patients who got the first dose. And this is the number who got the second dose. We can talk about this difference soon. And this is the number of death cases. Okay. Death cases overall from the very beginning, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. I would put some emphasis on this number. As you can see, that about 8%. Actually, what you see here with the red line, do you see it here? Yes. This is not, this is not COVID related. This is, uh, the home front command puts alerts, real time alerts on each uh, website with all the lists of, uh, cities, villages, et cetera, that need now to get into shelters because it's bombed. So there are a few small villages here. It's not related to the COVID at all. <laughs> this is a uh, part of a big, town, this of a big city, this is a part of a very, very big city, uh, another part of it, another part of the same city, and uh, actually all this city needs to get, city of Ashdod needs to get into shelters now, which is really amazing. Yeah, it's um, amazing to see that in, in the real time thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, isn't an issue between the first dose and the second? Uh, are yes. there a lot of people who after getting the first dose let's say delay the second, don't come in time, or don't want the second dose, or it doesn't happen at all? Yes, as you can see, you have about 8% of people who got the first dose and did not came to get the second dose. About 400,000 people. Now we will hunt these people down and make them come, but probably not all of them will come Send they see that the level of the epidemic here is now very low and why should they get the second uh, dose? Uh, maybe they will say that after the first dose, they, they felt bad with some uh, um, um, side effects. So, but this is again a very good, it's very good because even with getting the first dose, you are partly covered and if we, about 92% of the people who got the first dose came to get the second one, then we are really in a very good condition. Okay. Uh, overall um, advice, let's say from not, or probably advice is a good word um, to us because we are vaccinating very slowly, I would say for the moment, but vaccinating somehow. So what um, is the most efficient according to you? I think that in order to succeed in this vaccination campaign, you actually have to have three legs. One is the supply, and not just the supply to Ukraine, but also from the entry point, like the airport, to all the secondary and tertiary points. So first of all is the supply, second is the logistics. If, if you know that on your way to your work, it will take you five minutes to get vaccinated or, or 20 because you need to wait 10 minutes after it, but 20 minutes and it's done and you have enough parking or it's close to the uh, train station or bus station, then you will get vaccinated in higher rate. But if logistically, I need to take my car and get one hour drive, etc., I will not do it. 
So first is the supply, second is the logistics, and third, and it's the most important one, it's the public engagement. You have to create trust, you have to create demand, and you have to promise the people that it will be easy to get vaccinated and it's easy to get the scheduling for the vaccination. And once they will get to vaccination, they will get like a green passport, what we say here, that they will be able to travel and everything. So the public engagement is the third leg. And without one of the legs, this table will fall apart. I will have a couple more questions about the public engagement and logistics. But before that, there is a very good question from Tkachuk Natalia. Uh, those who are vaccinated twice or vaccinated once, how many of them got COVID then in Israel? Um, probably few tens of thousands mm -hmm. got it. But severe COVID or not um, severe COVID among them? I think, again, when we started vaccinating for the first, I think, two months, we didn't vaccinate people who got positive before that. Only two months ago, we started vaccinating people after they got uh, positive. So I would suggest, let's say, I don't know, 200,000 people. I can check that and send you the, the answer, but 200,000 people who were positive also got vaccinated after that. Probably I misinterpreted my uh, the language barrier was the reason. Uh, how many of vaccinated people got COVID after being vaccinated? Oh, so little. We checked it daily. It's like, if I remember correctly, it was less than... Point zero 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 something. So, if I remember correctly, when we checked it in one of the, I can, can actually see that. But I think that out of two, the first two hundred thousand people who got vaccinated, about twenty people got positive two weeks after the second dose. So twenty out of two hundred thousand. It's and really, not severe and not and didn't die or, and, or and did. all of them were not severe i think that at the end once we started getting in maccabi 1.5 and 1.8 million people vaccinated oh i think yeah 1.7 sorry we had few cases of death even though he, he was vaccinated but he could die from so many other things um so the, the, the COVID itself probably caused only few, really few cases of death. And, um, and people who got positive managed to stay much healthier or with less severe con condition and symptoms from people who did not get vaccinated. And coming back to the logistics and public engagement, uh, you did a lot of things during your career with regard to the logistics and s service for the patients and uh, uh, public engagement. What new did you use this time in COVID? Were there some things which you were amazed yourself or proud of yourself Something very um, new or something funny or strange which was used this time with regard either logistics and or public engagement? I think that if I need to put my finger on the, 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 the single thing was turning from emergency and stress and a lot of fear into, I would say, some kind of festival of vaccination. So we created very big compounds and the atmosphere in the vaccination compounds was great, really great. Um, and it wasn't crowded and it was very much ordered. And people felt that, wow, it's like uh, being a VAT in, a, in a, I don't know, in, in the best hotel. Because once I'm entering the compound and I use my um, like Maccabi card, a stewardess comes to me, says my name, and takes me to the 
nurse station to get vaccinated. And so it felt like really a VAT procedure. So we did took it from emergency and, and a lot of stress into a positive experience. And I think this wow created the wow among the patients. And once you left the compound, you start messaging all your friends. They got vaccinated. It was amazing. Wow, da, da, da. It created a lot more demand. Um, did people put actually lots of photographs of each other getting vaccinated in the Facebook and everywhere? Millions. Millions. Really. Okay. And, and, and it helps, right? Of course it helps. And also uh, some of the news anchors came to get vaccinated and one of them issued like um, something on Twitter or on Facebook and he said, this Maccabi bastard, they, they, they vaccinated me so fast, I didn't have time to take out my iPhone and, uh, and do a live photo of it. So all of them really made all the celebs, some of them were coordinated with us prior to coming to, to get vaccinated because we really wanted to recruit them like the celeb chef or politicians, uh, we really wanted them to stay, or actress or actresses, we wanted them to get vaccinated and, and put a photo on Facebook. Or we had someone with the age of 100 years, 107 years. This was wow. his age. And he came to get vaccinated with his son, his grandson, and his uh, fourth level, grand-grandson, okay? So the four of them came to get vaccinated. We, we, ordinate, we, we ordered it or we uh, scheduled it for the same time so we'll have a good picture of them. Of Things all like the generations that, at the same time. All generations at the same time. We created an atmosphere that is kind of a family gathering it's nice to come and get vaccinated and things are running very smoothly. Uh, did you have any uh, crisis communication related to the fact that somebody died after vaccination and vaccine being accused of this or something like that? Yeah, I was waiting for that question. <laughs> um, actually, at the first day of the vaccination, we had something that we didn't anticipate. Uh, as a, at the first day, we started vaccinating only medical staff. So one of our pharmacists came to get vaccinated and the nurse did not, it was the first day for her to vaccinate with COVID. She didn't dilute the vaccination bottle. It needs to be diluted because it's not, you don't get one unit, you get five you units. You get six or five oh, or six. Yeah, five point, yeah, something. And she vaccinated him. And only a few minutes later, she understood that it wasn't diluted. Yes. And then you, are, you, you feel like the burden of all your country is on these shoulders because you understand that this kind of crisis may close the campaign and no one will get vaccinated again. If something happens to him, but nothing happened to him, I guess. It, it's not that, because as I said before, you have to create trust. Now, oh, just because of the mistake, you mean? If somebody learns the about the mistake. Okay. Because it's, such, it's, not, it's not getting mistake with flu shot. Flu shot is routine, it's not interesting. It's getting mistake with the most interesting thing in the world now, really. So we understood that all the cameras are on us, and all the reporters are on us, and it will take minutes before the reporters will know about it. So the protocol is to send patients like this one into an emergency room in one of the hospitals uh, just to keep an eye on him. What I ask to do at the first moment is to send him to one of our hospitals where I can supervise all the communications and, and, and everything. I didn't want this crisis to run away. Then I issued, I initiated the press release 
because I knew that the mistake already happened. Now I must not make other mistakes. Other mistakes can be trying to hide it. So I went out as wide as possible saying, look, we had a mistake. And this guy, I gave his name after, of course, getting his permission. This guy uh, got five times the amount needed, but he is okay. And if you want, you can talk with him. And actually, I added, the Pfizer research was when they gave patients five times the dose that we are giving. Not one single dose, but five doses. Only when they saw that even one dose is, is making the same effect, they reduced the doses. So the first few hundreds or thousands of people who got in the research got five doses. In the clinical trials, you mean? In the yeah. clinical mm -hmm. trials, yes. Yeah. So the reporters had no really a story, just something to report about what with two, two lines, that's, that's it. And then we got on our knees and prayed for the God of the Jews, the God of the Christians, and the God of the Muslims just to ask him that his patients will stay safe and nothing will happen to him, which was the case. And the day later, he gave some interviews and he was very much fun from all this festival around him. And then we had two cases the same like this, a week later and two weeks later. Uh, but the media took it very, um, like a no big story. And the nurses, how they survived their own mistakes? I mean, they were very shocked. Did you support them, um, comfort them somehow? Or on the opposite, they were punished somehow? No, 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 no. They did not pu got punished at all. Um, what we did is we understood that we have to have in each big compound a supervising nurse that she and only she makes the dilution of every battle. So we did change some of our protocols and adapted them to this uh, reality. So it, it helps in reducing the uh, chances that something like that, like that will happen. Mm -hmm. Let me check if we have some questions from the audience or not. If we don't, then we could finish. No, we don't have any further questions from the audience. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and tell me if I asked you everything I should have asked you, or I forgot to ask you about something important. I, I will say something about all the, probably all the people that are now with us, our medical staff. Um, and I must say that putting an example and getting vaccinated and telling your patients that you got vaccinated, will you will earn their trust and you will make a, you will set an example for them to get vaccinated as well. The level of trust in, in doctors and nurses is still high and uh, more than more than the institute that it works for or more than the government. It's not just in Israel or just in Ukraine, it's all over the world. So um, I really think that if you will get vaccinated first, it will be easier to convince people to get vaccinated. Agree. So thank you so much for, for this interview and uh, I hope to see you soon in Israel or in Ukraine. <laughs> And stay safe, because this is important to stay safe in the situation where Israel is now. Yes. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.